Hey, what's up? This is Brandon Simmons for BrandonSimmons.biz, and this is my weekly video blog called Bullheaded, a review of the Houston Texans news, as well as a preview of the upcoming game matchups. So, this week, the Texans are going to be going on the road to take on the Minnesota Vikings, a surprisingly 2-0 Minnesota Vikings, and the Texans are going to look to extend their own 2-0 record to 3-0, but we're getting to all that, um, Whenever we get to all that, a little bit later on. Uh, first thing I want to do is do a quick game recap over um, last Sunday's win. So, Texans took on the Chicago Bears Sunday night football last week. And they came away with a victory. And it was a very impressive performance um, by the Texans. In particular, it was an pr impressive performance by the defense. Um, defensive unit finished with seven sacks and two interceptions. Uh, one and a half set each by Will Anderson and also um, excuse me, I just had it. Uh, by Will Anderson and also Daniel Hunter. Um, everybody else uh, shared a, at least one sack, um, including Derek Barnett and Mario Edwards. Um, secondary, um, awesome performance as well. Uh, Derek Stingley, he got a pick. Uh, Kwame Lasseter, he got a pick as well. Ricky Kwame, ugh. Rookie Kwame Lassiter, um, he got a uh, pick in his game as well in the uh, third quarter. Um, as far as the offense goes, uh, good solid performance. Um, Nico Collins once again uh, showing off that he can be the number one receiver within this group. Uh, another 100 yard game for him, eight catches, 135 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, CJ Stroud, 260 yards, no picks, but one touchdown. And you know, three measly little sacks or whatever, but who's counting? So, uh, <laughs> overall, um, uh, if I could just summarize this game, uh, it would probably be, uh, oh, wait, I can I, well, I'll get to that in a minute. I get to that. <laughs> I get to the Aziz hit in a minute. Um, so yeah, um, if I could just summarize this game, uh, pretty solid performance, um, by this team. Um, just overall, um, you know, both sides play good. Um, defense obviously had the better game, including the Aziz hit <laughs> um, in that game. And so, speaking of that hit, um, you know, everybody's talking about the CJ Stroud, um, Caleb Williams exchange um, at the end. So, if you didn't catch it, basically, um, you know, CJ at the end of the game, CJ Stroud was, you know, dapping up all the players as you know all the players do, and um, he, you know, was about to dap up, you know, Caleb Williams um, for a good game, and so, you know, he was trying to, you know, call Caleb Williams back and like, hey, you know, uh, you know, kind of just he was just trying to advise him on like, you know, just watching out for hits and just, you know, saying how to like slide and all this other stuff, and so kind of became a big thing um just yeah it just kind of became a big thing in the uh media when everybody was like oh you know cj stroud who is he you know they him and kayla williams are like the same age blah 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 um me personally uh and also other people were like you know kayla williams just wasn't trying to hear that and all this other stuff so I, the way i see it is like this i actually see you know both sides now um as far as like kayla williams goes um I don't think he was trying to, like, you know, be, like, rude about it or anything. You know, he just lost the game, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, he just probably wasn't trying to hear anything about that, you know. Uh, CJ Stroud could, probably could have told him about, you know, Harold's chicken had a new set, had a new special going on. He just, Kayla Williams wasn't trying to hear about that, you know what I'm saying, at that time. So, um, I think it was it was just a moment that was blown like you know way out of proportion and a couple of things too like i've seen caleb williams uh, on hard knocks and he kind of when the coaches were talking to him he would kind of like respond um in that manner a little bit and so to me personally that irks me when people respond like that like just real quick yep 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 you know what i'm saying because i feel like you just not getting information, but I think with other people, they can kind of just take it and accept it and be like, oh, you know, he's understanding it, you know what I'm saying, he's understanding what I'm saying and all this other stuff, um, but that's just really a small thing, um, the bigger thing that I probably want to speak on is like, 
them thinking that, you know, CJ was trying to big bro him. And I don't think he was trying to big bro him or nothing like that. I I see it as like um, maybe an older coworker or a peer giving you advice on the job, you know, giving advice on the job to, to a younger coworker or a newer um, coworker, if you will. You know what I'm saying? I kind of see it as that because they're both in the same profession. And, you know, we're not going to act like, you know, all the quarterbacks hate each other. You know, that don't that doesn't really happen in like every sport. You know what I'm saying? As much even back in the day, they probably didn't really, you know, athletes probably didn't really hate each other, you know, regardless of sport or whatever. Um, but you know what I'm saying? These guys they all, you know, they all got respect for each other, you know what I'm saying? That but they're still competitive. But at the same and but at the same time they still want to kind of see each other, you know, succeed. You know, they probably been in camps together and things like that. So their connections are, you know what I'm saying, probably extend far beyond um, where they are today um, in the NFL. So um, I think he was just probably trying to, like, just give them some advice, you know, like, because technically CJ Stroud is a pro. He is a veteran, you know what I'm saying? He, his, even though he's had, he has one year under his belt, so he's just trying to just slide some little bit of information uh, to Caleb Williams. So I don't think it was no big deal. Uh, but it was just funny seeing everybody overreact. <laughs> it really was. Uh, so, yeah, speaking of overreaction, Nico Collins is the MVP of this year. <laughs> uh, but, no, all seriousness, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, Nico Collins has really, like, just stepped up. That's another thing I wanted to talk about, really. Um, he has just stepped up this season. After two games, it's been, like, amazing. And so, with me, um, I've never been really big on Nico Collins before CJ Stroud got here. Uh, you know, I thought he was, you know, kind of decent. You know what I'm saying? I I was wondering, like, you know, where this would actually go um, when he got drafted. And, you know, we just, at the time, we just, you know, really didn't have a quarterback. And every time I think about him and when we didn't, like, have a viable quarterback like that, I was like, you know, um, Andre was here when we didn't have, you know, the greatest of quarterbacks. Uh, same thing with um, DeAndre Hopkins, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, if they had to go through that, you know, certainly he can go through that as well. But, um, I, you know, I just saw flashes, you know what I'm saying, of greatness. But fast forward to, you know, last season and even this season, you know what I'm saying? He's really, like, emerged early on as a number one receiver. And – I guess not just me, but a lot of people felt like this wasn't going to be like, you know, led by a number one receiver. This was going to be like a trio of things. But even then, you know, you can still, I can still see some people think like, you know, Tank Dell is a true number one. Uh, maybe it's Stephon Diggs, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, I'm, and I mean, it's Nico Collins right now, you know what I'm saying? And so with two games just into the season, um, it's kind of, early to really see him like as like the guy the main guy uh of this uh, wide receiver group um you know but he's put up the impressive numbers so far so um he's already got like the back-to-back 100 yard games um eight catches for yeah eight catches for uh 135 uh on, on last sunday um he also has what, six catches for 117 um, in the opener against Indianapolis, you know what I'm saying? And he currently leads the uh, league in receiving yards at 252. And, hell, I don't even check stats uh, for (laughs) uh, for these particular uh, games or for these uh, episodes until, like, week four because, you know, everybody's still kind of working their way around. But, I mean, look, he's on pace to, like, really just – kind of show up and show out, you know what I'm saying? So, um, big ups to Nico Collins, man, uh, really just stepping up and becoming that number one receiver at the moment. Uh, we'll see how far it goes, you know, maybe Diggs and Dell will have a chance to, like, you know, have their own stretch for that the number one, or maybe Nico just kind of dominates that position uh, throughout the year. So, either way, it's going to be fine with me <laughs> as long as we keep on um, winning these games. Um so, quick injury report. Uh, Brevin Jordan, he's out for the year. Um, ACL injury. Um, you know, I felt like he was really going to be a, you know, kind of a big contributor um, as far as, like, getting production out of our tight ends uh, this year. So, 
of course, we got Dalton Schultz. We resigned him, but um, Brevin Jordan, you know, he's been here for a while, so he's familiar with the culture. Um, he's embracing the culture change, if you will. Um, so definitely um, can't wait to have him back out there. Uh, Joe Mixon could be sidelined uh, with an ankle injury this weekend as well. So um, that's him. Um, they said Damian Pierce is still like out. Uh, he's been dealing with a hamstring injury. He's suffering in practice. So um, it's going to so it's looking it's looking like all signs are pointing to Cam Akers. Um, Cam Akers did not have a bad preseason. And a lot of people pegged him to be the number two uh, running back. So um, hopefully uh, he goes out there and he just, you know, saying does what he does, especially against um, a team he used to play for. So speaking of a team that Cam Akers used to play for, which happens to be the Minnesota Vikings, we're going to be playing the Minnesota Vikings <laughs> this Sunday on the road. And so um, as I mentioned earlier, hinted to earlier, uh, Vikings have. They're 2-0 right now, and this is a surprise that they're 2-0. Um, they drafted J.J. McCarthy um, earlier this in the um, – they drafted J.J. McCarthy um, this year in the first round. And so he was poised to be their, you know, franchise quarterback until he got injured um, in the preseason. So now that job belongs to Sam Darnold. And right now Sam Darnold is having, you know, he's having the best career of his year. Like even after two games, you know, his averages are up. You know what I'm saying? Completions, percentages, um, all that stuff. So um, he had, he's having the time of his life right now in addition to, you know, them winning games, you know. And it's, it seems almost too early to say that, but um, that's where we're at right now. Um, and, of course, you know, he has a little help. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, goes without saying. Um, Justin Jefferson, um, he's still up there. He's... You know, playing phenomenal. Um, he had a huge, he had a um, big game last week, and so you know, what I'm saying he's definitely part of the, he's definitely um, a reason why they are uh, undefeated at this point as well. So, with that being said, the Texans are undefeated and they're trying to extend that streak. You know, what I'm saying, but they have to get through Minnesota. Uh, is Minnesota just you know just because they got rid of Kirk Cousins and you know they're quarterback of the future is down doesn't mean that they're not going to put up a fight you know what I'm saying especially with Sam Donald uh behind center so let's so yeah let's get into you know what they need to do to um just kind of win this game this weekend all right so first thing probably should go with goes without saying is minimalize Justin Jefferson. So, Justin Jefferson, we all know him. We all seen the receiver show on Netflix. The guy's pretty cold. In fact, um, he is so cold. Let me see if I can pull it up. I don't know. So, yeah, uh, the guy's super cold. Uh, fifth in the league in receiving yards. Um, two touchdowns this year so far, uh, had a huge, um, had a huge, uh, play last week against the San Francisco 40, excuse me, <laughs> against the San Francisco, um, 49ers, um, four catches for 133 yards, including a 97 yard, um, Yes, touchdown. I knew I was right. Anyway, it was including a 97-yard touchdown. So, um, out of those 133 yards, 97 of it was a touchdown. If he does not get that, then we're looking at, you know, a whole different, like, stat line, to be honest with you. Um, so, with that being said, um, one of the things to minimize him is just kind of take off you know, take away the deep routes for him. You know what I'm saying? Because he's definitely uh, some guy, somebody that can break the defenses open, that can get deep. Um, so you want to make sure that, you know, if he's taking it on the deep routes that, you know, we have 
You know what I'm saying? We had somebody there to kind of like challenge him, if you will. You know, um, of course, that'll more than likely be, you know, former LSU teammate uh, Derek Stingley. Um, but I would, it would be behooving of, I guess that's the real word, to maybe just try and mix the, um, switch different cornerbacks on them. You know what I'm saying? And just keep the legs fresh because, you know, they're going to go to him in this game. And so then, not only that, they're going to use him uh, to his best uh, some of his best ability. So um, definitely take away those deep routes. Make sure he does not go deep and break the uh, game up before score. Um, second thing the Texans got to do is slow down the pass rush. So last two games, Minnesota has been on a tear um, on the defense side of the ball, man. 11 sacks in the first two games. Listen to that again. 11 sacks in the first two games um, of the season. So uh, the Texans are going to have to do a lot better uh, with pass protection. And that was something I said last week um, that they were going to have to improve on. And, you know, it looked like they kind of did. But, you know, Stroud was still sacked um, three times. Uh, He might have to be more decisive in his throws or put in a position where he's more decisive in his throws. Um, But that's just the gist of it, really, Uh, because that – Man, 11? Come on now. That <laughs> that Vikings pass rush is something crazy right now. Uh, Patrick Jones, Andrew Van Kinkle. Uh, Jones actually leading the team uh, right now with four sacks. And not to mention, they also got former Houston Texan Jonathan Gennard over there. So um, I'm pretty sure he's comfortable with like going against you know linemen that he used to practice against. So it's probably going to feel real at ease for him. Um Another thing that can do to slow down that pass rush is just utilize Tank Dell. And, you know, Tank Dell, these first two games, he really hasn't been, like, in receiver, uh, in a receiver type of fashion. He hasn't been used in a receiver type of fashion. He's been more for, like, you know, the speedy out, speedy routes out the backfield, things like that. So, you know, jet sweeps and all this other stuff. So, um Definitely get him, um, get him in the passing game with like quicker passes, so more decisive, look, more decisive passes. Uh, get those to him, um, just so he can, you know, what I'm saying like have a chance to break open the defense or whatever. But uh, definitely get those passes to him, so you know you're not so Stroud isn't laying on his back, you know, because somebody didn't sack him or whatever. So. Um, that's how, you know, that's definitely what should happen um, with that. So, uh, just to recap, uh, minimize, minimalize Justin Jefferson, uh, take away his deep routes, um, slow down the pass rush. Um, so yeah, slow down the Minnesota Vikings pass rush. They have 11 sacks in the first two games of this year. And in addition to that, uh, they need to use tank, utilize tank Dell, um, for some quicker, uh, yeah, for some quicker routes or some quicker ways uh, for him to get the ball. So, uh, that's all I got for y'all uh, tonight. Um, if you're watching this on Facebook, uh, go to facebook.com slash Brandon Block and, you know what I'm saying, you know, like my page, follow it, subscribe it, all that good stuff. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, click the like button. Also, go ahead and click on that subscribe button as well. So, uh, that's all I got for y'all this week. I'm Brandon Simmons from BrandonSimmons.biz. Holla black.